Hey, what's up coaches? It's Coach Johnson again here talking about the power raid today. We're going to talk about snag and why corner. Um, I just want to say thank you to all the people that have subscribed and uh, that have liked the videos. Continue to please do that. We're going to continue to talk about the power raid. Um, today we are talking about snag and corner, which is one of the OGs of uh, quick game when it comes to the, the air raid. Um, it's one of my favorite ones. It's right there with stick. Uh, you get We get a lot of mileage out of it. We'll run out of a bunch of different formations. Um, as you can tell with our presentation, uh, we were 17 of 28, which is 61%, uh, threw it for 185 yards, almost 11 yards per, per play, um, which is very good, uh, seven touchdowns and five explosives. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to get into the lab, we're going to draw it up and install and explain it how we would to all of our kids. Um, and then we're going to show you a little bit of video of the success that we had this past year. And I also want to draw up a drill that can help you with it. Um, we ran into a little bit of problem when we first installed snag um, because it's not you know it's not natural sometimes for kids to understand how to sit and grasp especially when they're coming from the power eye and the flex bone um, so we had to explain that so this drill that we used really helped um, but we got pretty good at it and we got better and better as the year went on our quarterback started feeling more comfortable with it um, explained to him the triangle read the you know high to low uh, so here we go we're going to go into our playbook and we're going to draw it up so the first way is out of spread, um, what we'll do is we're, we'll line up the running back as a, he'll run a swing. So wherever, which side he is, that's the concept side. So we'll have him run a swing. Um, the next thing that we'll do is, since it's in the name of it, this is our spread. And what we'll call this is we would go Y corner. I'm gonna try not to have it get pulled up. So we'll go Y corner and we'll tell him to get to six. And then he is outside of the 20. He is going to break to the front pylon. Um, if we are in the red zone, he's going to break to the back pylon. So we'll have him cut to the to the front pylon. And we tell him that you got to be ready. The quarterback can adjust you and throw you flat at any moment. All right. Now here's where it gets fun. All right. Snag. We will tell him to line up anywhere he wants based on where we're at. All right. His goal, okay, and let's go put up a four, let's just put up a four, three. It's the easiest one that we, I know that we have set up uh, to teach our guys from day one. All right, so they're playing, playing off. The guy that he is looking for is to see how this linebacker right here is reacting, especially to our swing and how he carries out with the slot receiver. So let's say that he's flying out. We do not get a vertical step. Um, which one thing that we struggled with when we first started it, our kids were running a slant stop. I like to get to the point and we give them a window, okay, of five and six and trying to get a little bit of distance right here. That is the circle that we're looking for based on what their backer does. So we try to tell them the aiming point, all right, will be wherever over top of the slot, all right? So we try to get them over top of the slot but his eyes, the entire time he's running it, just like when you have mesh, you have to be able to react, um, which is great because we have basketball kids that are always constantly moving. So we tell him to watch the linebacker. That linebacker comes right here. You want to sit right behind him in about five to seven yard range um, and show your hands to the quarterback. So that's our concept side. Now, one thing we can do is let's say that they are not worried about our swing so much and they're going to give that up all right they know that he's dropping back all right so what we tell him is that now if that linebacker just stay in there you get in here and not going to pick him but you're going to get in his way to allow that running back to make some moves all right so we have really good running backs that we trust um that can make some plays so we just kind of tell him to make sure that he tries to find an area over kind of where the slot lined up and his eyes are watching the linebacker. All right, and you don't want to go, we don't kind of go in front of them unless they're playing super deep, which we have faced a team that was playing deep on us and drop, just cover it. If, if that linebacker is dropping out here, then guess what? We tell them to get right here and sit. And I think we have a, a pretty good uh, video evidence of that um, in our video clips that we'll tell them just to sit right there, show hands and quarterback will hit them really quick. All right, so that is our concept side. All right, let me make sure that I draw this up pretty good for when anybody ever takes a look at it. All right, so we're going here and we're sitting. All right, so now backside. We have a rule on a two by two. 
So what we'll do here, all right, is our outside guy is he's now running a snag as well. All right. And then our H, okay, is going to run that glance route. All right. So what we're doing is in case a team lines up and they're playing man, all right, that's kind of our man beater is we'll try and get our slot on this side. We'll try to beat them. All right. And then we'll also have our X. We'll run a snag. Um, and what we'll do is he knows that the entire rules is that he's just got to find that opening. And so what we're hoping is that that safety, um, the one-on-one -on -one carries out, then we'll just hit him on a little skinny. But at some point he needs to sit down. Um, and so that's kind of our rules for our two by two. So this is what two by two looks, looks like. All right. Uh, so now let's say that we have a three by one, whether it's with motion, all right, or whether just starting off with three by one. All right. So I'm going to cancel this and going to restart. So if we are in trips, right. All right. And we go into this. All right. What we're doing is nothing changes except for the running back. All right. Our backside with our man. Now he has a slant and our running back is swing to wheel. All right. So now Y does his thing to six. Boom. He sits with his snag. All right. And now our H we have him actually run an air or run a bubble. All right, so we've really worked this because what we'll see is the backer will follow super hard on that bubble, all right? And that's what we'll uh, do when we go three by one with, this is all Y corner. Now, okay, now let's do this if we were running H corner, okay? Nothing stays on the, nothing changes on the backside, all right? Now, the same rules for our snag though. Now H is the one running it. So now we are looking, we have this area right here. We don't want to go completely in there, but he now knows because H is the one running the corner that his aiming point is a little bit different of he has a chance because if that backer is apexing, he now has to see where that opening is in this area. And what we do with our Y is we teach him arrow and then as he gets out here he'll come and sit back and find the open area for our quarterback and show hands and like i said then we have our backside we have our running back swing to wheel and then our backside has a slant so that's how we run it um out of trips and out of spread and so like i said spread we showed you the two by two we can also do it on the other side where we go spread um h corner and our h would and have a corner our x would have the snag and our running back would have the swing. All right, so now we're gonna get out of this, okay? And now we're gonna go and show you some film. All right, so our first one's from our playoff game. All right, and here's our three by one. All right, three by one, and we are in our snag Y corner. So what should happen, all right, is a bubble. All right, get the six and corner, and then he, should come right in here and sit. And then you have your slant, your wheel to, or your uh, swing to wheel. So here we go. Backer takes that bubble like we talked about. Now there's nobody in this area. So now you see our receiver, his head's literally watching this outside backer. He sees that he's starting to creep out a little bit and he sits right where the slot receiver was Boom, sits in space, turns outside. We don't, we tell him don't go inside. That's where the enemy's at. That's where the other team is. You don't want to get hit by them. All right, that's a basketball kid. We're very excited about him. He's going to be a starter this year. All right, and then right there, all right, you got 10 yards. Okay, so let's take a look back at this. And what we have backside is we actually tell our quarterback with this right here, we would actually take that. All right, we don't mind that right there because he's giving us outside leverage. So if he can win that route, we're fine with that. And we'll also tell him if he's coming and that backer is slow to get out there, we'll take that swing because we got running backs that can make it happen. So let's take a look how it looks on the backside. 
Let me get this out of here. So right here, we see we could have won that, but it would have been really quick. But as he clears, watch this slant window. And so we that's something that we would see on the sideline. Like, hey, take a look at your front side, your concept. All right. But if they are getting aggressive and giving you that middle of the field, we'll come back and we'll hit that slant. Because now this is Cam Fowler, one of our guys that's a big playmaker. He catches this. He makes him miss. And now we're one-on-one -on -one right here. And look at all this open land. But we are fine because we sit in the hole. And like I said, it's beautiful. All right. Great corner route by Zay Blair. Nobody gets hands on him. He takes two people. And then we were able to sit. All right. So that's our trip snag Y corner. And I was in our playoff game. All right. Now we're doing it again. Okay. And now what we'll do is we'll roll out because that will create a little bit, um, a little bit more movement from the defense. So here we are. We already talked about it. And now with a rollout, though, what we do is we actually change him because it would look just not look good if we're running a bubble and stand on the same level. So we actually have him run an arrow. So now think about what this defender's thinking. He has this guy trying to go in front of him. This guy is going behind him. All right, he has no idea what's happening behind him with that other guy. So now he takes the arrow. That's perfect. So now as a quarterback already sees, and our receiver, this is beautiful. And this is, Zay is becoming a very good route runner, understanding um, coverages in space. And if you take a look, he sits perfectly. And now they take our corner, and this is against Cummings, a very well-coached team. And easy pitch and catch. All right, nice little hit there. All right, but if you take a look, boom, we're able to get seven yards, okay? All right, so now here's an example of where we are going from spread to trips, all right? And so in motion, what he'll do is he'll run that arrow, sit, and come back and show hands. So let's take a look. So we don't get a lot of change from the uh, with the motion. So our quarterback should already know, okay, I like that, all right? But he is coming back, and he sees that they're taking two on Gus. They collide with him, and so he should have been able to hit that right now, all right? And we did come back, and I uh, was thinking about showing it that we do come back and do hit a slant for a touchdown in this game. But take a look at this. Takes two with the corner. He should have right here gone that back foot all right, after his drop and should have delivered it. But what I love is he keeps it alive, and then Ashton stays alive, does not get too wide. He stays on the numbers. And then there we go. Make somebody miss. All right. And it's 11 yards on a on a one to two yard route. All right. Now we're talking about the red zone. So here's where the adjustment is. We actually, here's our snag H corner. All right. So what we do is that Zay will now get his six. So here we are. Get his six. And he's going for the back pylon. Terrible route, on, uh, me drawing, but you get the point. All right. And then our rule also, when we get down here inside the 20 is, it's now just keep going. We're not sitting. All right. And then right here we have Ashton should be running his arrow. All right. Let's take a look. All right. So he doesn't run his arrow. He doesn't run his arrow. He runs his speed out. All right, but that's fine because now it slows both guys here. So the arrow, I think, would have, because of him running in, and if he would have ran an arrow, it would have made this guy sit even more, which would have opened up that back of the end zone. But we're okay because ends up doing his job with that. They don't communicate. And a great ball, great catch by Zay. It could have been put in a little bit better position, but back corner will take that. So we're very happy with that. All right. Now. Okay, before I go to this next one, I want to show you a nice shot play out of this. Okay, um, it worked very well uh, with any type of motion or setting up out of trips. It's a great tendency build, uh, breaker, all right, because right now a lot of times show trips, you know, quick game, all that good stuff. Well, I believe in four main concepts on the quick game and then build a shot play off of that instead of creating a bunch of different plays, just build something off of each other. So let's go trip try it again. All right. And what we're going to do, okay, is we're going to keep our snag. Okay. And we're going to go snag and we're going to go corner 
post. So what we have, okay, is we're gonna run us we're gonna run a corner on our post. Okay. So I love with being able to create a scissor concept. So and rubbing. So what we'll do is we'll tell our why. He's getting 10. Right. He is going to get 10. Oh my goodness, sorry. He's gonna get 10. And then he's gonna stay on this hash. All right, on a post, okay? So then our H, depending on, once again, nothing changes with his, if he's inside the 20, all right, he's gonna run to the back pylon and then anything else he is going to the front pylon. So he's gonna get to a six and he's gonna cut high, all right? And then you have your snag because it's gonna be tagged as the H corner. He knows that he's got this area right here, all right? And so boom, and sitting here, all right, and you got the six to seven, that's, all, that's where we give them, it's that six, seven, take a look, and we actually, right here, we kind of have them foot fire to create a little bit of space. Backside, nothing changes. All right, this is what I love about it. All right, boom, and sit, and swing to wheel. All right, so that is our shot play off of it. Um, and what I was saying is that we sometimes we'll go spread and we'll motion and have an RH around the corner. Or we'll go spread and we'll motion our Y and he'll go with the post to create any type of separation. See if we're getting any movement and motion with our <clears throat> with that from the defense. So let's go into it. All right. And here is our shot play off of it. Okay. So we're in empty right here. All right. So our quarterback knows like, hey, you are, you know, you're to expect the blitz. But we're taking a look and we have, you know, kind of two and a half over two. All right. And then three over three. All right. And we have on one side, we have our three guys that, you know, we believe in. All right. So what should happen here is he should get 10 here, six, and going to the front pylon. All right, getting here, sitting, and then nothing changes here, sit, and go. So let's take a look, okay? Do a great job. Right now, it looks like it could possibly be verts, and then this is where we get it, because they, they're worried about the middle of the field. We had our hit on for sticking up if you watched my last video, all right? And so now, this is where Gus is aiming for there. We throw it flat because there's nobody there, where if we throw it high, we have to possibly worry about a defender. Grayson, our uh, was a sophomore quarterback, our backup quarterback came in and threw for four touchdowns and uh, 400 yards this game. And so we throw it flat. All right, if he would have put a little bit more on it, we'd probably have a chance for a touchdown. We end up scoring on this on this drive, but it could have been a little bit better ball, Gus fighting for it. All right, so we really like that. So let's run it back, all right, and kind of go full speed. And so his eyes are on. What do the defenders do? Are they worried about the middle of the field? Because right now we see middle of the field open. All right. And if they, and what we do is as soon as we start going, because we had him with sticking up, we've hit him with a four vert, they actually uh, fly over to take away the middle of the field, which opens up, you know, our sandbox down the sidelines. All right. So here we go. Boom. They kind of take that away. All right. He sees the cluster and then he knows to so just, he throws it. Great cut. Great play. All right. So there's that. Okay. So that was us running our snag Y corner, um, H corner stuff and a shot play off of it. Now I'm going to show you a little, uh, a drill that we do, uh, to help us get better at it. All right. So we're going to cancel out of this. Okay. And let's just, um, see how this goes. Okay, so we're just gonna show spread even though we're not using it. All right, and what we'll do, okay, is just take him out here. We'll have all of our receivers. Okay, they're all gonna line up over here. All right, and we're going to set up cones to rate about where it should be, okay? And what we'll do then all right, is we'll have a coach right here. And so what we'll do is they'll run their snag and they know to sit in these cones, 
all right, where this big open area they are and what they do is they're reading us. All right, so I'll sit right here. If I come out here, they know to go through, go to go behind, all right, and then sit in that opening right there as soon as I clear, all right? Now, let's say as I'm right here and I just stay flat, all right, and I'm carrying out that corner, he knows to get right there and to sit, all right? He's gotten to that area, he gets to this cone and he sits because that's where he can because the coach is carrying off of the corner. So we teach him to take a look at how they're taking the flat and how they're also carrying out the corner. All right, if they're dropping out the knot, that's when we're fine with them uh, going in front like we talked about. But we try to try to loop right behind, right underneath them um, and sit in that area. So this is our triangle drill. So we, you know, we'll, we'll mix that. We work our settle noose drill with stick and mesh and shallow cross. And, and as soon as the receiver gets into this triangle, the quarterback is supposed to throw it um, nice and easy. So that's us in the lab today. All right, um, that's now two videos. All right, with stick and snag. Uh, those are my, two of my favorite uh, quick game. All right, the next video to expect would be uh, something out of mesh. Um, another thing that I wanna start doing is how we incorporate certain receivers. So our first one that we're gonna take a look at is how we use our H-back. Um, everybody probably knows him in the state. All right, probably around the country, Gus Ritchie's committed to NC State. Uh, we want to show how we use him because we use him blocking. Uh, we put him in a bunch of different ways, which is kind of uh, something in the power rate if you have a guy that can do that. Um, he's very multiple, so we move him around. Um, and I want to show how we use him. Uh, we, we love him. We ex we're excited about him. We get him for one more year. Um, he's a great leader, great kid. So I'm going to start doing a series, not just on the passing game and getting into the lab, but also how we run the ball in the power raid. And then I also want to do a spotlight of how we use certain receivers or body types. Um, and I'll, first I want to start is with an H because once again, in air raid, everybody uses a bunch of different receivers, but this is what kind of turns us into the power rate and being multiple. And you have having a bunch of different groupings. Um, and he's a guy that can be very multiple and, and we have a bunch of different ways to get him involved um, and that for our game plan. So coaches, once again, thank you for your time. Uh, please continue to share, uh, like, comment. I want feedback. I want to know what you want to hear. I want to know how you run different things. Uh, it, it's clinic season. We're all here to get better. Um, I'm not a know-it-all. I've watched so many videos, went to clinics, um, stolen it. And then it's the biggest thing is uh, why I also like to do this is when it comes into May and we got spring ball, I want to have taught this so many times I can do it in my sleep. All right. I want to have clear answers for our kids that they're playing fast. So that's part of the reason why I'm doing this video series. Um, is it also it's helping me as like professional development um, and it's helping me being a better teacher, coach. So once again, thank you for your time. Uh, continue to share this with everybody. I appreciate all the love. All right. Um, and you got a chance to run that power raid. I'm um, excited to have uh, more talk with you guys. Uh, follow me on Twitter. Get my YouTube channel a try. Uh, thanks and have an awesome day. Appreciate you guys.